I loved it when Bishop said that we've got to get past just being, oh, I, the favor of the Lord, the favor. Favor means that I'm going to do it sporadically. But we have moved into the place of covenant and promise, meaning that I'm entitled to this. Now, so I know that I know that messes with some of us because, you know, I'm such a worm as I I'm not a worm. I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. I'm just a nobody. No, the devil is a lie because if God created me, I am somebody. One thing that always bothered me, and Bishop hit it one Sunday, and I said, thank God. How many times have you heard people say, I'm just a sinner saved by grace? I don't understand that. I'm not telling you that I don't slip up and sin, like Bishop said this morning, but I'm not a sinner. I might play basketball, but I'm not a basketball player. Somebody ought to help me in here tonight. I might play football every once in a while, but I'm not a football player. I might mess up every once in a while, but because of his grace and his mercy, even when I mess up, he don't look at me like he does the sinner. Why? Because when he saved me, he covered me with his blood. His blood has covered me. Not only has his blood covered me, his blood has washed me. And when I mess up, the Bible said that I have an advocate with the Father. That means no matter what I do, that do I'm not telling you to intentionally go, shall I continue in sin, the grace may abound, God forbid. But if I do happen to cuss you out, if I do happen to get my head, uh, uh, hey, the Bible says that I can run to the Father and I can ask him to forgive me. And the Bible said he cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. The only people that remember your mess are people that have not changed. The only people that will bring up your past is people that are still there. Well, I remember when. Well, I guess you do because you're still there. In the black church, we used to sing a song that said, Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord. I told him, Bishop, I said, Some of you can't sing, Take me back because you ain't been nowhere. Your faith has not increased. Every time you get a little pain or ailment, you still run into the medicine cabinet to get a, grab a pill. Every time something gets real bad, you run into the hospital. The devil is alive. By his stripes, I am healed. I've learned to lay hands on myself and declare my healing in Jesus' name. It amazes me the people that will come to church sick and leave sick. I don't care what you say. Coming to church sick and leaving sick is a choice. Come on. The Bible said if there be any sick among you, bring them to the elders of the church and the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. There's too many testimonies of people being healed in this place for you not to get it. If I don't stay here for no other reason, I'm staying here for my health. <laughs> you got to give me some on that. I'm staying. Hey, come on, somebody. I haven't been sick since I was five years old because I believe that God is a healer. My grandmother believed that God was a healer. The only medicine we had was castor oil. It was the heal all. You stomp your toe? Come on, let's get some castor oil. Thanksgiving and Christmas, castor oil. Oh, this is some new kind. It's apple. Okay, this is this, this worse than all the rest. You've got to understand, when you're in a place where healing is taking place, the only reason you're not healed is because you haven't made up your mind that healing is for you. You need scripture? The Bible said there was a woman with the issue of blood. And the Bible said that she had spent all that she had on physicians. In other words, she had tried doing it, doing it her own way. Tell somebody trying to do it her own way. Hey, but then when she had come to the end of her substance. See, some of us, the reason you ain't got nothing because God knows you'll put more trust in the horses and chariots than you will in God. But he said when she had spent all that she had, said she came to herself and said within herself, 
Some of you will get what you need from God the moment you make up your mind that I'm going to God and I'm going to get what I'm going for. When I ask God for something, I'm not hoping and a praying. I'm believing, and not only I'm believing, I believe that God will manifest what I say. The Bible said that we shall have what we say. What are you saying? Let me let that sink in. When situations come your way, what are you saying? What's your conversation? What you talking to your oh, honey girl? Oh, Jesus. I'm just going through and you know the oh, I'm just going through and I just don't know what I'm gonna do. But you're supposed to be saved. You're supposed to be believing the Lord, but you're walking around telling other people who don't know God. Other people that ain't even got saved, ain't gave their life to God, and you got the nerve to, that your te- the Bible said that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. People are going to be changed by what you say, whether positive or negative. People are being changed by what you say. You've got to guard that pink tornado. You don't know God. We just playing. Don't hit me. <laughs> Big old fella boy. First time I come over here, I, I ran and hugged him, and he hugged me back. <laughs> and I don't know how he did it because he's shorter than me, but yet my my feet are all up in the air. Just <laughs> I said, now how did I get in the air? And he's shorter than me. <laughs> You're not saved. On last week, I was telling you about the goodness of Jesus. I was telling you how much you need the Lord and how the Lord will turn your life around and how God will change your family and your and your children will act right if you just give your life to the Lord. And then I'm calling you talking about, you know, I'm going through and I don't know what I'm going to do. So what have I done to my testimony? Uh, kill my inflow. Go back to that scripture, uh, brother. So the land flow with milk and honey. In other words, they had seen what God desired. You've got to learn how to see with your mind's eye what God has for you. Mm, 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 mm. Next verse. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. We done, we done seen the milk. We done seen the honey. But nevertheless. I heard Bishop say their butt got in the way. Yeah, because if we had this in the modern vernacular, we would say, but the people. <laughs> and we should be in Bishop change around and say, the B-U-T-T people. <laughs> but the people. The people's butt got in the way. You've got to watch yourself. What, what do you think happens the moment that you pray about something and then get up and talk negative about what you just prayed about? Well, I've been asking the Lord, but I just don't know what he's going to do. What do you mean you don't know what the Lord going to do? Now listen, God is very meticulous and methodical. Now the Bible says, and we we we, you, we down ourselves too much. In Psalms, there's a scripture that said he has made us a little lower than the angels. I began to study that scripture because I really wanted to know what it meant, Apostle. And in all actuality, in the original Hebrew, it said that he made us a little lower than God. But the translators, because they like us, such a worm as I, wanted to be modest. Your modesty going to keep you broke. Your modesty will keep you sick when it comes to the things of God. But he said he's made us a little lower than the angels. There's authority in our mouths when we open our mouths. The Bible said that God created all of the animals and then he brought the, listen, there was a transfer, there was a transfer of power. 
He said that I created man and I gave him authority over everything that creepeth and crawleth. And we do, and we still running from mice. We still running from spiders. The devil is a lie. Let a mouse run over here. Y'all seen Green Mile? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have more power than you know. Tell them, say, open up your mouth and declare it. Open your mouth and declare that you have power and authority in your situation. God created all of the animals and the transfer, or he, he changed the deputy ship. He was a changing of God. He said, I've created everything. But now I've created Adam in my image and in my likeness. Now, if you look at Genesis chapter 1, it says, I created man. Let, uh, God, let us create man in our image. God speaking in his pleroma. Not three people, but God speaking in the pleroma of who he was, the totality. He was speaking, even as our president says, we the people of the United States. The king of England says, we the commonwealth of England. So when God said, let us, he was not consulting with a board. God was talking to himself, if you will. See, some of you need to learn how to talk to yourself. He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So he formed the spirit of man. I loved it when Bishop said he reached within himself and pulled some of himself out and called it man. But it was not until, cha I need you to go back to when you got time. I ain't got time to mess with it. But in chapter 2, he goes back and he forms man out of the what? I'm glad y'all said dust. A lot of places I go, they say dirt. It wasn't no dirt. You know what dust is? Dust is when we done swept the carpet in here and the sun's shining through and the little particles. In other words, God pulled some particles together. Oh, who can't nobody do that but God? God formed us out of the dust of the earth. That's chapter 2 of Genesis. Chapter 1, he created man in his image and likeness. Chapter 2, he formed man out of the dust of the earth, and then he took what he formed in chapter 1 and breathed it into what he formed in chapter 2, and man became a living soul, a living nephesh. The body without the spirit is dead. So now he forms all these animals. I've created man. I gave him a body. I'm going to create all the animals that he has dominion over. And because he has dominion over them, I'm going to bring them to him. And whatever Adam calls them, that's what they are. What are you calling the things that God's bringing into your life? Pray for me. This is just me. I don't do storms. I do challenges. I don't do trials no more. I do challenges. And because I changed my vernacular, how I say it, the situation, it's been a real, y'all pray for me, and I'm not bragging, but I want to show you there's a place where you can get in God where you ain't on no roller coaster of up and down. There is a place in God where every day can feel like Sunday. I don't remember the last time that I had to cry with my hands and with my, my head in my hands. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I know what I'm going to do because I study God's word. And when I pray for something, I'm not hoping and praying that he will. I know he will. I know that sounds a little prideful, but the Bible says, who have known the mind of God that we may instruct him? And most people like to stop right there because they're not confident in themselves. But I'm real confident in who God has made me to be. And the verse goes on, says, but ye have the mind of Christ. Who shall instruct him? But you have the mind of Christ. That means I have access to God consciousness. That means that when I read God's word, I can read what God has promised me and I can declare it over my life and I have the right to believe that God's going to perform it. If I'm sick, it's only because I have not read by his stripes, I am healed. 